Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across the island chain. The construction of a new sports complex is stirring up controversy on Maui. Plus, see how a surf shop on Kauai stays connected to the community. Also, a Lahaina woman honors her Hawaiian heritage as a pa'u writer. You'll meet a Kailua woman who teaches the art of ribbon lay making. See how an iconic tree in Waikiki is being restored through both science and spirituality. And meet a young woman who is overcoming great adversity and spreading a message of gratefulness and inspiration. A long time ago, I made a promise to myself to always live my life with grace and to always try to take the high road. All on this episode of Hiki no, coming to you from Farrington High School on Oahu, home of the governors. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network. Hiki no, can do. Aloha, I'm reporting from Farrington High School here on the island of Oahu. Today, we pay tribute to the architect of our school, Charles William Dickey. Dickey was born in Haiku on Maui. For college, he went to Massachusetts Institute of Technology to study architecture. Dickey became famous for developing a distinctive style of Hawaiian architecture characterized by open spaces and sloped roofs. The roofs later became known as Dickey Roofs. Some prominent Hawaii buildings Dickey designed are the Hale Kulani Hotel, the Alexander and Baldwin Building, and Punahou School's Pawahi Hall. Dickey lived and worked in Oakland, California for 15 years, then later returned to Hawaii and continued to design structures for 20 years until his death in 1945. Our first story takes us to Maui, where construction of the new Central Maui Sports Complex is causing controversy among residents who live near the complex. Not low, long. Go. Long strikes. Go. All I know is that we need a sports complex as soon as possible. There is obviously not enough room for all the sports teams that we have here on Maui. Sports complex is a group of sports facilities in one area. In 2010, when Lieutenant Governor Sutsui was a state senator from Maui, he was integral along with the legislature and the governor in appropriating funds for the complex. There are football boys playing on softball fields out there. Um, there's not enough fields for everyone here. And since the population is growing and you know everybody's into sports right now, we kind of need it now. Casey is not the only person to state that Central Maui needs a sports complex. In my 10 years in being in the legislature, one of the things that uh, a lot of folks in the community have continued to talk to me about was the need for additional park space. And you knowing that it's it's an important part of you know many of our our young Keiki's lives you know being uh, f physically active having opportunities to engage in outdoor activities um, I thought that this was just something that you know Maui needed for such a long time and so I'm I'm pretty excited that we're finally uh, getting moving. Right over the fence from hundreds of homes, the sports complex will consist of one baseball field four softball fields, four little league fields, three soccer fields, ample parking and tournaments on a frequent basis, which leads us to Dr. Harley Manor, who is the vice president of the Maui Lani Neighbors, a group formed to oppose the location of the sports complex. There was going to be a regional park built here in the area, and then later on we found out that it was going to be a sports complex. And if around 2013 when we started to look very carefully at the sports complex idea we found that we were not in favor of it because it intruded upon our privacy it would have created lots of traffic lots of noise and also lights at night he alleges that the building of the sports complex is in violation of several land use laws and restrictions Dr. Manor and 60 other Maui homeowners filed a case against the DLNR and Lieutenant Governor Sitsui to halt the building of the sports complex. A representative from the DLNR was unable to speak with us, but Lieutenant Governor Sitsui states, the, the project's been under construction for about a month now. I think you know, we're, we're looking forward to, 
to having uh, this park be completed in, in just a couple short years. The outcome of the lawsuit is still being determined, but many athletes in the Maui community feel. Honestly, I, I don't really care about where the location is. I just know that we need a sports complex as soon as possible. This is Skylar Stoke from Maui Waina Intermediate School for Hiki no. If you'd like to comment on this story or anything else you see on Hiki no, join us on Facebook or send us a tweet on Twitter. Hiki no is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hiki no Can Do. We're back on the campus of Farrington High School in the Kali District of Honolulu. On this spot in 1898, there's a Grand Chapel building, complete with the pipe organ and stained glass. The land upon which the chapel stands used to be owned by Kamehameha Schools, and the chapel was a part of Bishop Memorial Church. In 1938, a final church service was held. The building was condemned and the land was bought by the territory of Hawaii for Farrington High. The chapel was vacant for 16 years. In 1954, the chapel was raised to make way for the Farrington High School Auditorium. Our next story takes place here on Oahu, where a Kailua woman has been sharing the art of ribbon lei making with people from around the world. The giving of a lei is a timeless treasure that expresses those special meanings. A lei made from the heart will last a lifetime. This is the belief that Meli Enos lives by. She began creating ribbon lays when she retired from her job working with senior citizens in 1988. Since then, Melly has created over hundreds of ribbon lays and they look like real flowers. When I see a flower, I try to experiment and imitate how it looks like. And if it doesn't come out right, I tear it apart and do it again and again and again until I get it. And so that flower there by my wall is called a desert flower. So when I make the lay and it looks like the desert flower, then I call it the desert flower. Melly started teaching ribbon lay classes at Ben Franklin stores and people were noticing her unique creations and designs. Soon, customers were coming into Ben Franklin buying thousands of specialty yarn and ribbons. Now that I make lays, I was on TV and all that. They call me famous. So I'm lining up at the bank and they said, hey, you're the lady on TV. And I said, no, that's my twin sister. They said, no, it's your voice. It must be you. As Ribbon Lake Creations gained popularity, Melly got the idea to publish a book on the art of laymaking. My goal in life is to share my talent to not just locally, but everywhere in the world. I taught a lot of people already, and now they are also making lace like this lady from Japan. She learns from here, then she goes back to Japan and teaches other people too. Melly was inspired to be artistic at a young age. We don't have much in the Philippines, but my mother is crafty. So she takes all these great papers and taught me how to make flowers out of them and we make a big wreath and uh, we put it at the graveyard when it's memorial day i have all this imagination of creating things from not expensive uh, materials the lay making it makes you feel good though. when you finish something you feel like you accomplished something not like a couch potato doing nothing, just watching TV. And that's not good for seniors like me because you're not challenging your mind. Millie has a team of helpers who assist her in the classes that she now holds at her home. And people from all over the world come to me and ask me about ribbon lay making. And they buy the lay and bring it back to Greece or wherever. And that's promoting Hawaii also. I said, you come here and I teach you for free. Melly is an ambassador of Aloha. She gives from the heart and is an inspiration to others. This is Anjali Kishi from Kainalu Elementary School for Hikino. We are back on Oahu at the campus of Farrington High School. The high school opened in 1936 to 738 sophomores. At that time, there were only 25 teachers. 
The original building was across the street from our current location and the architecture was very different from what our school looks like today. The first graduating class of 1939 initiated Farrington's alma mater. Fight song sung at football games and our motto ended to learn, go forth to serve. Our next story takes place here on Oahu where a young woman turned her struggle with a life-threatening disease into a message of gratefulness and inspiration for her alma mater, Iolani School. Summer Kozai graduated from Iolani School in 2000. After an MBA from Northeastern, she returned to Hawaii to work as an auditor for the federal government. Summer Kozai. But at age 26, after a trip to the Marshall Islands, Summer fell sick with severe flu-like symptoms. On April 24, 2009, I felt really sick. And so I went to Queens Hospital to the ER. And as soon as I got there, I went into shock. And after the point where I told them I couldn't breathe, I can't really remember anything. Bacterial meningitis is a potentially life-threatening disease. It can cause paralysis, gangrene, stroke, brain damage, and even death. Mentally, handling surgery was the easy part. It was the physical part that was hard for me because it's like major surgery. I had, I think, not really a full idea of how major it was at the time. Summer became a quadruple amputee as a result of complications from meningitis. Summer's diagnosis was the most medically severe case that I've ever seen and that I've ever worked with. She is a fighter. I mean, I've never seen anyone that has this tenacious spirit that she would never give up. It wasn't an I can't attitude. It was always, I can, I will, I must. This is how my life is going to be and I'm going to do it. February 19th, 2010. The power of positive thinking has a great deal to do with success in life. I really understood that power at the point where there was no option but to see the good in life. It has to be a conscious choice to see what could have been and be grateful for what is. There are times when the pain is ridiculous, but then I have to be grateful that I'm able to feel. It's for breakfast. I need to tell my story. Every time I share it, I get stronger. Yes. Good job. One day soon, I'll walk into chapel and share mm -hmm. my story. Mm -hmm. I'll tell the kids that I was them and that they need to listen and learn while they can. Peace and love, Summer. I feel so blessed to know Summer. You know, for years it was, I'm going to walk into chapel. You've probably heard that. You know, I'm going to come into chapel. She's got a lesson for all of us, you know. We, we get so uh, caught up in Things are so manini and make them so big. She's a role model. She lives bigger than most of us do. Um, if someone had told me when I graduated that I would be back here doing an all school assembly, I think I would probably freak out since I barely could get through speech class in ninth grade. Um, that being said, March 10th, 2010. Being positive with regard to my situation requires a strong will to consciously focus on only happy things because it's so easy to visually recognize reasons to be upset with my new life. I'll always miss what I physically lost. I'll never again be able to feel my toes in the sand or feel an engagement ring on my finger, but I'm not angry. I'll feel the ocean again and I'll find someone who makes me so happy that a ring won't matter. See, there are always two sides. To sum it up, a long time ago, I made a promise to myself to always live my life with grace and to always try to take the high road, however difficult the situation was. I'm always, always thankful for what I have and who I am because I know that this is nothing compared to another person who is hurting just as much, but for other reasons. Grace and the high road, that's the way to go.
Today, Summer is back at work, learning to drive, and continuing to inspire others. This is Caroline Kodama from Iolani School for Hikino. We are back at Frankton High School in Honolulu. Here at Frankton, there's a football legend. His name is Skipper Diaz. He graduated from Frankton in 1962. Then he played defensive tackle for Oregon State University. Then later for the Canadian Football League. He later returned to Frankton as a football coach for 21 years, leading the team to the playoff 12 times. Frankton won the OIA championship under Diaz in 1990. Diaz started having the football team sing the Frankton alma mater after each game on the field, whether they won or they lost. Skipper Diaz passed away on August 30th of this year at the age of 70, but his influence lives on. Our next story takes us to Lahaina, Maui, where one woman stays connected to her Hawaiian heritage through pa'u riding. When horses were introduced in the early 1800s, women joined men in learning to ride. Pa'u skirts were initially worn over their dresses to protect their legs while traveling. In the early 1900s, the riders began taking part in floral parades, decorating themselves with elaborate floral arrangements. For King Kamehameha Day parades, the Pa'u riders represent a royal court, led by a queen and followed by her princesses representing eight different islands. On Saturday, June 14, 2014, Lahaina's King Kamehameha Day parade featured Havealani Kahahane representing the island of Molokai. Actually, it's funny because I never rode a horse when I was in high school. I think I was very intimidated by them, you know, because they were so big. When I first started riding Pa'u, this very awesome lady, her name is Auntie Flo Makikau. She was so happy that I was going to ride and she told me, you know Havealani, when you ride Pa'u, Auntie don't want you to buy any flowers. And I looked at her and I said, why? She said, because our aina or our island, our land has a lot to provide for you and you don't have to spend any money. It's here, it's right here. And I said to her, but it's so much more easier to buy. And she said, I know, that's the thing. Uh, us Hawaiians, they don't know what easy is because Hawaiians used to do things the hard way. So I, I took her advice and I did it. I used the island, the aina. And so for four years, I've never bought a flower. The feeling of when you take that foliage and you make your own lei and then you put it on your horse and then you ride on it, it's the feeling that you feel is unbelievable. Oh, Molokai, the friendly isle, decorated in green. As we ride down the parade, we share our beautiful horses and our beautiful colors and our beautiful makeup and our hairstyle and all the foliage and, and flowers that we have um, with the community. Princess Hapealani Kaanui Kahahane. Oh, Hapea, what's up? It's on her fourth year ride. She works at Lahaina Luna High School. It's actually an honor to ride in this parade and to be part of it. You know, you see these little girls, you know, and what, what's going through their mind when they see, you know, a beautiful princess with an, a beautiful horse. And I can actually relate because I was one of those little girls one, you know, years ago. And I sat and I watched this parade and I said, I want to ride on one of those beautiful horses and be beautiful one day. And uh, eventually my, my dream as a little girl came true. Princess Havealani's commitment to pa'u riding keeps her connected to her Hawaiian culture. This is Kainoa Raponte reporting from Lahaina Luna High School for Hikino. Hi, I'm on the campus of Farrington High School here on Oahu. Today, I'll be telling you about an amazing drama program we have. It's called T-Shirt Theater. The program was started in 1980 by George Kahn and the late Walt Delaney when then English teacher and department chair Sherilyn Tom encouraged them to teach audience manners to all incoming freshmen. Things went so well that they started teaching a special summer course called Explorations and Drama. Participants then went on to perform for the entire school in the auditorium. Shoots! T-Shirt Theatre, now an after-school program, provides English oh, academic yeah. credit to its students from grades 7 through 12 and is now a project of the Hawaii Alliance for Drama Education. Our next story is by students from Waikia High School in Hilo, 
about a locally owned surf shop in Kapa'a Kauai that continues to strengthen its connections to its customers and community. I guess then. Yeah, right. Good, good. To be successful in business, you have to know your customers, and the staff of Tamba Surf Shop is no exception. Who's that? Oh, yeah, I know Uncle Dino. Right on. Show you a couple stickers for you. While other stores struggle to bring in customers, Tamba, which means firstborn son, chooses a more personal approach. Tamba in France, you see Tamba around the world, and I think it's a way for Aloha to touch the people through this brand. It's a great brand. There's never a shortage of customers stoked about Tamba's surf products. You know, I got my first surfboard at Tamba. And like, hey, you guys. It's so like yeah. coming here and like seeing Sa and the atmosphere and stuff. This is like super sick. Sa, Tamba Jinlock opened Tamba Surf Shop in 1998 to give back to the community. At the Pine Tree Surf Contest, he serves malasadas, hot cocoa, and shave ice to the surfers and spectators there. It's been here for about 15 years, almost 16 years. Started off maybe quarter of the shop. It was very small at first. Instead of trying to turn a profit, Tamba Surf Shop turns their attention to the next wave. Pretty much anyone that walks through the door that's with something to do with the youth and asks for an, uh, like a donation will do it, like almost 100% guarantee. So any kid will help out. Tamba donates surfing gear and cash prizes at surfing competitions. So he can help them out by giving them like a good deal on a board or a pair of fins for free or just something to help them out, you know. Um, okay, you guys, so right on. Uh, I do like the other larger surf stores, but I know that my dollars are going to stay here on Kauai and that's what's important to me. And indeed, these dollars are keeping one man's dreams afloat. He grew up surfing, so that was kind of his life, you know, and his dream was always to open his own surf shop. This has been Cody Laguire from Waigao High School for Hiki No. We're back on the campus of Farrington High School in Kalihi on the island of Oahu. Did you know that Farrington High School has eight academies or small learning communities? The oldest one is the Health Academy, which was founded with the help of industry partners in 1991. At that time, there was a sharp rise in demand for healthcare workers and a labor shortage. The Health Academy is unique because it prepares students for jobs in the medical field through on-site internships at hospitals. Students learn valuable skills such as taking vital signs, CPR, and helping patients in bed and wheelchairs. We now take you to Waikiki on Oahu where students from Mid-Pacific Institute tell us how spiritualism and science came together to restore the health of the iconic Moana banyan tree. When guests come here, they stand up there on the veranda and they gaze upon this tree and when you speak with them, they're like, my God, this is such a beautiful place. The Moana banyan tree was planted in 1904, three years after the Moana Surfrider Hotel was built. It was seven feet tall and seven years old. Today, at 117 years old, it stands over 75 feet tall and its canopy is over 150 feet wide. Up until 1979, um, it was so full that, that um, you know, sometimes you couldn't see through the tree and, and, and look out into the ocean. Through the last century, the Moana Banyan has provided shade for countless guests. Among them, celebrities such as Amelia Earhart, Ernest Hemingway, Frank Sinatra, and Lucille Ball, to name a few. And for many, it's been a place to relax and unwind. I actually came here in 1971, and I remember seeing this tree then, and uh, was fascinated by it. And uh, so I brought my daughter back. In 1979, the Moana Banyan tree became one of the first trees added to the city's exceptional tree list. And in 2001, it was declared a millennium tree by the America the Beautiful Fund. But caretakers discovered ailments with the tree that could be traced back to 1989 when major renovations were completed. Heavy construction work produced unforeseen consequences that affected the tree's health. The heavy machinery on the roots always is stressful for the trees. In 2007, the Moana Surfrider staff met with Sherry Barstow, who is a Nature Spirit Channel and the author of the book, Elementally Speaking. 
She claims to be able to communicate with nature spirits, including the Moana banyan tree. So we were really interested because, um, number one, it's not often that you get to speak to a tree, and, and number two, what she was saying actually made sense scientifically and arboristically. And what the tree said, uh, most importantly, that her roots, which once touched the vibrations of the humans and the people that uh, surrounded her, um, were no longer felt. So in other words, something was physically covering her, the, her, her roots. The information Sherry provided and what was already suspected by the Moana landscaping staff was confirmed in 2011 when excavations uncovered dead roots under three feet of soil. She's a teenager right now. So right now she's in the prime of her life and we want her to, to take us through the next centuries. It's so peaceful and so nice. I think that uh, one day maybe we'll come back and you'll bring your daughter. <laughs> so although the tree's health has improved greatly over the last few years, plans are ongoing to ensure that the Moana Banyan is healthy for generations to come. This is Andy Lam from Mid-Pacific Institute for Hikino. Aloha, I'm here at Farrington High School on the island of Oahu. Last spring, students of Sean Du's Hawaiian language class built a holua. A holua is a traditional Hawaiian racing sled. This sport was open to all classes of people, but it was most popular with the ali'i royalty. A person would lie down on a narrow wooden sled and surf down mountain slopes, hills, and even lava fields. The sled that Farrington students created is 12 feet 6 inches long, 3 inches wide at the nose, and 8 inches wide at the tail. There are approximately 170 lashings that hold the sled together. After the sled was finished, the students practiced riding the holua down the hills of Kaka'ako Waterfront Park. Woo! Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we enjoyed sharing them with you. Make sure to tune in to next week's episode for more proof that Hawaii students Hiki no. can do. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.